Jesus Christ, risen Lord, we confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Please take a moment of silent reflection. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's being, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is Colossians 3, 12 through 15. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. All above, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. We have Easter for the next five weeks. Much to celebrate, but to remember Martin Luther, every Sunday is a mini Easter. Let us live our life in accordance with that. And may we, every Sunday, meet Jesus again for the first time. That is the title of Marcus Borg's book, way back in 1995, a book that had great importance for me. And as I looked ahead at our readings for the remainder of the Gospel of John, for those of you who have been reading along, we started in January and we'll go through uh, into May, and we'll have read all of the Gospel of John. And what we experience in these last five weeks are images of Jesus, but more importantly, a direction for each one of us. Now, there are two common images of Jesus. The most common identifies Jesus as the divine Savior. People with this primary belief answer three questions this way. See if you fit into this. Who was Jesus? The divinely begotten Son. What was his mission? To die for the sins of the world. What is his message? The ultimate importance is to believe in Jesus. It all comes down to belief. The second most common is seeing Jesus as a teacher. It is held by those who are not sure what to make of the claims made about Jesus, not convinced by the answers of the divine Savior, when these are set aside, what remains is what Jesus taught. And this turns into morality. The great commandment, love your neighbor, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, followed by a fairly narrow code of righteousness, of being good. One is primarily spiritual, the other moralistic. 
But Marcus Borg argues that these lead to an incomplete image of Jesus in the Christian life. Why do you believe? Why do you follow Jesus? Is it limited to one of these? Or maybe a combination of the two? The Apostle Paul speaks of both of these, but recognizes it is so much more. As Paul said to the people of Athens in Acts, it is in Jesus that we live and move and have our being. It is all about our experience, having the divine Savior, being taught those spiritual disciplines. And Jesus makes all the difference in our personal life, but also in the lives of others and for all creation. The Gospel of John shares four of the ten post-resurrection experiences. The writer understood it, that it is more than just belief and morality. It is living in Christ. We look at six meetings of the risen Lord with his followers and the difference it makes in their life of faith. The first we heard last week. Mary Magdalene met Jesus in the garden, assuming he was the gardener until he called her by name. For any person who believes that the Bible dictates that women are to be subordinate to men and doesn't allow women to speak, especially to men, Jesus proves otherwise. He meets her first and tells her to go tell the disciples, who are all men. There are many Christians who need to meet Jesus again for the first time. The disciples, after hearing from Mary, how do they react? Do they say, you're a woman, we're not supposed to listen to you? No, they run to the tomb, and just as Mary said, it is empty. Do they celebrate? No. They go back into hiding for fear of the Jews. One important note, I shared this when we started the reading through the Gospel of John, but it needs to be repeated often. When you read the Jews in the Gospel of John, it specifically is speaking about the religious leaders of that time. It's like saying that Russia invaded Ukraine. You see the demonstrations of the Russian people who do not want to be there. Again, there are many Christians who need to meet Jesus again for the first time to understand this truth that not all are against Jesus in any specific belief. In the same manner, the disciples of the writer of John is often referring to the community of faith, not just the 12 or at this point the 11. Because the disciples are hiding, Jesus has to go to the disciples, walking through a locked door so that the disciples could meet Jesus again for the first time. In doing so, Jesus fulfills a promise from his farewell address in John 15. Peace I give to you. Peace I leave with you. His next fulfilled promise is not leaving the disciples orphaned. The verb to breathe occurs only in the New Testament related to God's breathing breath of life into the first humans in the second creation story. We have been given the Spirit. We are never alone, for the Spirit is, we are told, among us or within us. Two more truths. First, Jesus has come to seek and save the lost. He is willing to walk through locked doors to do so. And second, Jesus offers peace to everyone, even those who would deem, we would deem not worthy. We shared this Bible study at our quarterly staff meeting and as one person put it, I wouldn't even go near them. They left Jesus. Why does he care about them? Because Jesus cares about all people. He offers it to those who deserted, denied, and distanced themselves. But then something even more amazing happens. Jesus trusts 
the disciples. Jesus trusts us to invite others to follow. Gail O'Day in her commentary on John writes, perhaps the most difficult part of the Pentecost story in John concerns precisely what Jesus commissions the faith community to do. Just as Jesus was sent by the Father, so he sends the community, specifically stating the power to forgive sins. As we heard him announce at the cross, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. As a church, through the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are to continue this work in Christ. It is more than just belief. It is more than just morality. It is about salvation for all people and all creation. All of what Jesus did for his disciples. Jesus offers his presence, his peace, his spirit, and his calling. We too receive those gifts. It is what he gave to Paul, who wasn't in hiding, but openly attacking Jesus and his followers. And like the disciples, Jesus goes to Paul. It's not through a locked door, it is through a locked heart. He goes to Paul and offers Paul his peace. That surpasses all understanding. And then fills him with his spirit to go and tell. The letter to the Galatians is just one of many of Paul's writings to invite, encourage, and support followers of Jesus. Here we read the qualities necessary for living in this new community. This is what church should be about. This is how we are to live with one another. He starts, who is God's elect? Holy and beloved. All three designations were used for God's people since Deuteronomy the fifth book of the Bible. Now Gentile readers, that means anyone other than a Jew, are welcomed into this. Through God's initiative in Christ, we are now, we are now all included in those chosen and set apart. As new people in Christ, Paul is calling them to have a deep and heartfelt sympathy for the situations of others, including their interests and their needs. Humility is understood to count others better than ourselves. Patience, the ability not to become frustrated and enraged, but to make allowances for others' shortcomings, tolerating their exasperating behavior. Thank you. Bearing with one another involves fully accepting them for who they are, which is all important to forgive others with the reminder that Christ has forgiven you. All of this is necessary to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our efforts to be one body in Christ. I invite you to meet Jesus again for the first time over these next five weeks so that through us, someone, just might meet Jesus for the first time. In his name, amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Give your church a sure and certain hope that overcomes doubt and fear. Fill us with the peace of Christ so that our lives proclaim your forgiveness and life. Loving God, we look to you. Open our eyes to see the abundance of water and nourishing food you provide. Help us to work together so that all have access to clean water and adequate nutrition. Loving God, we look to you. Inspire the leaders of the nations to work for peace and justice for all your children. Teach us to obey your commandments and live in peace. Loving God, we look to you. Ease the burdens of all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Grant healing, companionship, and hope to all who live in fear. Loving God, we look to you. Strengthen this congregation to sing songs of hope and promise. Raise up musicians who will share their gifts and lead our praise. Loving God, we look to you. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness as we remember those who have died believing in in life in your name. Reveal to us the joy of your salvation even in the face of death. Loving God, we look to you. In resurrection hope, we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in the promise of new life, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Join me in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Those of you who are gathered, I invite you to stand and share a wave of peace uh, to, to others. For those of you who are online, I encourage you to uh, share a word of peace in the comment or in the chat section. But most of all, as we heard today, let us be people of peace going out into this world sharing the good news of Jesus. Now may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.